Mindset, Brain and Body. And I want to talk to you today about medication. So I'll start with a story. I had a client once who was telling me about her couple days where she had forgotten to take her antidepressant anxiety alleviating medication. And she said she was driving her kid to daycare and she was dropped off her kids. Then she went to work and she got up to her office and then she had this horrible panic feeling and these intrusive thoughts that, oh my gosh, did I, am I sure that I left my kid at daycare or did I leave him in my car? I don't really know. And I'm freaking out. I need to go check my car. And she said it was just obsessive thinking. And she said in that moment, she was like, oh, I forgot to get my prescription refilled. I now have been off of my medication for three days. And so I tell you this story because this was one of those things where I have told this story to other people and they said, wait, 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 wait a second, time out. You mean that's not normal? It's not normal to be obsessing over something that might have happened or the worst case scenario. It's not normal to have a catastrophic thought. It's not normal to you know, dwell on what could be or what could happen. And normal is an interesting word and I don't always throw it around so flippantly, but in this situation, she realized that her medication was really helping quell those intrusive anxious thoughts and how much it was helping her just have so much more peace of mind and sense of ease. And it's important that we recognize this distinction because so often we start to just live our life always feeling anxious, always feeling like these thoughts are just a part of our everyday. Oh, this is just who I am. And we have to learn how to cope. And we do that through things like cognitive behavioral therapy, working with a therapist, meditation, mindfulness exercises. But those thoughts don't always have to be there. And so the way that I talk about medication with clients is that, hey, listen, if you are currently here and you want to get here and no amount of meditation, exercise, eating well, sleep, long baths, <laughs> walks outside, therapy lamps, um, vitamin supplements will get you there, it's time to look at medication. I look at medication as a way to get you from here to there, to bridge that gap. So then you can start to utilize those lifestyle practices that then can take you into a sustained mood uh, alleviator, just more stable feeling with your mood. But if you can't even get yourself, for example, off the couch to exercise or get yourself out of bed or go a day, without some sort of anxiety attack or panic attack, well, then maybe it's time to consider medication. And again, this is not something that is a failure on your part. It does not mean that you've given up. It does not mean that you aren't trying hard enough. There's something significantly impacting your ability to make these changes on your own. You know, right now with COVID and everything that we're experiencing, the amount of stress and anxiety that people are feeling is intense. And never before in my career have I referred people to medication as I am doing this so often right now. And it's because I'm seeing that even with regular therapy and even with lifestyle changes, that people just need a little more help. And it's okay to ask for that help, to say, you know what, like, I just can't seem to break out of this. I just can't seem to break free. I'm still so anxious every single night when I go to bed, or I'm so anxious that I'm having these stomach issues now, or I'm getting migraines, or gosh, I am so lethargic and depressed and apathetic and just is indifferent about the world that no amount of Peloton <laughs> workouts is going to get me there. And maybe it's fleeting. I feel good for a couple hours and then the cloud comes back over. All of that's okay. It doesn't mean that you're not trying. It just means, okay, I need to ask for a little bit more help. I have a couple other people in my life that have decided to use medication during the last nine months that never would have looked at it before. 
And the reason they're doing it is because they're saying, you know, life is really hard right now. Why not have a little bit of assistance? And a lot of times we, we look at this with so much stigma. We look at it with just as much stigma as going to see a therapist in the first place. And it's important to remember always that asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of bravery. It's courage to say, you know what? I can't do this on my own. I can't just keep reading self-help books and listening to podcasts. I really, truly do need the expert advice of someone who's a professional in the field. So maybe some of you are already on medication. Maybe you have considered it. Maybe you have been kind of flirting with it with your therapist or with your doctor. And if you are in that situation now where you're like, well, maybe maybe it would be a good time to help. The first thing to do is always talk to your medical professional. So if you're working with a doctor, whether it is your OB as you are pregnant right now and feeling really stressed out and really anxious, or it's postpartum and you need some help with postpartum depression or a mood disorder, maybe you are just going to your primary and you're realizing that you are a weeping raw mess and you can't hold it together and your primary care physician is the one that you can talk to or you're talking to your therapist. Whatever avenue that you go in, it really is important to simultaneously engage in psychotherapy to continue to get that week to week or every other week communication with someone that can help you work through what is going on because medication on its own is a band-aid. It truly is. It needs to be coupled with therapy so that you can say, okay, what are the things that I can be doing to be proactive? Now that I'm feeling a little bit better, how can I maybe get into more of a preventative mindset where I really feel like I'm managing this, that eventually maybe I'll go off my medication or I can stay on my medication, but then still feel really good about the accountability I'm holding myself to and taking care of myself. But medication without also engaging in some type of counseling, some type of help, again, it isn't necessarily going to treat the root. It's just gonna kind of alleviate some of the symptoms of the anxiety or the depression. Because ultimately what we wanna do is to be able to have a lifestyle for you that's created that you feel empowered, that you can handle <laughs> and through therapy, we can get down and dig into some of the stuff that might be creating some of the symptoms related to depression or anxiety, or if nothing else, just a way to check in with someone and say, okay, you know what, this week I'm actually feeling a little bit better, or this week is not so much, you know, what can I do? All right, so what are the different types of medication? So most of you have heard probably of some of the most popular, right? Lexapro, Prozac, uh, what are the other really popular ones? Celexa, Paxil. Um, Zoloft is actually the one that is most subscribed, well, prescribed <laughs> for women who are pregnant or postpartum. It has the most research around being the safest to use when pregnant and nursing. And so it's also the one that, um, you know, you might hear your OB talking about. Lexapro is going to be kind of like the entryway to antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication. It really starts at the lowest dosage. If you're just kind of wanting to put your toes in the water, then Lexapro might be a good place to start. But recognize that not every medication works for everyone. So those that I just mentioned are SSRIs. And so what that means is that it helps slow down the processing of serotonin in your system. And serotonin is the the feel good <laughs> mood, stabiliz mood stabilizer. And so serotonin, the more we have, the slower it is to be processed, then the better that we feel. You might recognize that you feel less irritable, less reactive. You might be able to let things go a little bit easier. And that's what the SSRI is helping you to do. Now, some people need to follow a, a different medication protocol. So there's things called an SNRI. So that's going to be serotonin and then also an activating type of hormone. And that's going to help with really getting you off the couch. If the depression is really heavy, then an SNRI might be one that you want to look into. And that's going to be something like Effexor or Cymbalta. And then there's also some atypical type of medication out there. So if those of you that have heard of Wellbutrin, that really helps with dopamine and also uh, Trintrelix, I think I'm saying it correctly, um, is going to be a selective serotonin releaser. So different things, 
for different issues and it's really important to talk to your physician about what one might be best for you. There's also always new research and studies coming out talking about the different um, side effects but then also the benefits of these types of medication. And then if you are someone who's like, you know what, I don't necessarily want something that I take every day, but more so something that I can take when I'm having an acute panic attack or something like that. Well, that's when you hear a lot of people talking about Xanax. That's going to be one, like, for example, if you hate flying or, um, you know, you hate going on road trips because you have bridge anxiety, which is normal. I hear about it a lot. Um, so that taking a Xanax is just kind of what you do in that acute scenario. So again, there's a lot of different medications that you can use and talk to your physician about. Your therapist, if your therapist is a psychotherapist or a psychologist, they do not prescribe medication. So you're going to have to work with an MD or a psychiatrist. And again, I, I, I cannot emphasize this enough. If you are going to go on medication, and you're going to go through your MD only or a psychiatrist only, it's really important to have a counselor, a psychotherapist there with you to help you with the emotional aspects of this all. Um, we work with an MD, Dr. Heather Koza, who is in Farmington Hills, Novi area, and she is a holistic MD. And so she works with clients really comprehensively in which she'll look at blood reports. She'll look at your entire history. She'll talk to you about everything that's going on in your life to then make a re recommendation for medication. And we feel really good about referring clients to her because not only does she do that initial assessment, then she'll follow up two weeks later and then eight weeks later. And the reason for these additional follow-ups are just making sure that the dosage feels okay, that the side effects aren't too severe. And then around eight weeks is when you start to feel the effects of the medication. And that way then your physician or your prescribing provider will be able to alter things if needed or just help you stay the course. I will mention in the comments, again, this doctor who we refer all of our clients to that are looking to explore medication because we really believe in this holistic, comprehensive approach because we have to take everything into effect. You know, you might go in and say, gosh, like I think I'm depressed. I really am feeling a lot of symptoms of depression. And then you find out that actually you have mono or <laughs> some sort of autoimmune disorder that's you know affecting the entire body. And so it's really important to look at things from all angles. And that's why, again, reset brain and body. We try to take that into account as well. So let me just quickly look and see if there's any comments or questions. Um, if you have additional questions related to this, please do drop something in the comments, but remember that medication is not a failure. It's helping you bridge the gap from where you are now to where you want to be. It's helping just quiet the noise a little bit so then you feel like you can trust your reactions and you can actually start making those lifestyle changes that might help alleviate some of your symptoms. Okay. I hope this helped you today. Um, as we get into the holiday season, just keep remembering to keep taking care of yourself. And I wish you all a happy, happy day.